right, how you doing folks? It's Ryan here once again with the Louisiana Academy of Performing Arts. We are here today with another live audio and audio production tutorial uh, with the Allen and Heath SQ5, but a lot of this is gonna apply to a number of digital mixers that are out on the market now. So we're gonna be talking today specifically about routing, okay? And we're gonna get pretty deep into some routing possibilities here. With the SQ5, we're going to route from Dante, we're going to route from the SQ5 itself, and then we're going to route everything into Pro Tools. So, the first thing we're going to look at here today is Dante. What is Dante? Okay, Dante is a digital audio network protocol um, that basically works um, with a standard network, computer network. Okay, so um, you can take a Cat5 cable, let's just say, and route um, lots of audio to and from various destination points. Whereas in the old days, we had copper cables and long snakes and thick snakes. Um, we can now route a ton of audio just over one Cat5 cable. You can get fancier cables like EtherCon or um, cat 6 cables but really a cat 5 will work um, just fine so once you get your Dante card for, this is an option on the SQ5 you'd get the um, there's an IO port on the back and you'd install your Dante card pop it in there visit the Audinate website um, just Google Audinate it's pretty easy to find and you'll download the Dante controller um, you can actually download it even if you don't have the card. I don't think it'll do anything, but you can play around with it maybe. Um, we're keeping it very simple here today. Um, I have two devices that I'm going to be routing. And I have the SQ5, which is um, up here. And then I have Dante Virtual Sound Card, which is basically a virtual sound card for your computer. Um, and that's how you route audio in and out of your actual computer. Um, instead of USB okay now you can do both at the same time which actually I'm doing today because recording this on uh, Wirecast I have the um, USB audio going into Wirecast and the um, Dante audio is going to be going into Pro Tools um, you cannot use the virtual sound card in two applications at the same time I believe they have something else to do that but I haven't checked that out yet Anyway, for routing, we have to tell um, things where to go, basically. So if you look at uh, the top, we have the transmitters, and then bottom, we have the receivers. So you can think of this as your output on the top and then your inputs on the bottom. Okay, so we're going out from the SQ5 into um, Pro Tools and the Dante Virtual Sound Card. Easy way to... Um, to do this all at once, you're routing all the channels. So we have 32 channels. You can do more than that. Um, Pro Tools, my edition, can only go up to 32. So there's no need for me to do more. Um, if you hit Control on a PC and then click the minus sign up here, that'll route all of them at once. And you want to wait for those green checkmark subscriptions to pop up. And then over here for um, the virtual sound card, we're coming out of that and back into the SQ5. We'll do the same thing. And I've already done this, so they were already green. If there are any problems or it doesn't work, you'll get um, some red, uh, red marks with a circle and a line through it. So you've, you know you've been unsuccessful. <laughs> All right, so we're keeping that pretty simple. We're not going to talk too much about this today. Um, there's lots of great tutorials on this and advanced things you can do, like multicast, where you can actually take. This has been very helpful for me, too. You can take um, the audio and output it to two different devices. So I could have a laptop as a backup um, recording a session, as well as my main computer, and I'm getting the exact same pristine audio at the same time. Another reason I got this, so that's great. All right, um, also you can make sure you're in the the um, correct sample rate that you want to be recording in. Another reason I got uh, the sound card 
the um, Dante card, that is, is because it can do variable sample rates, whereas the USB is locked at 96K, which is overkill for a lot of, a lot of times for things like this, for example, which is going on YouTube. We don't need 96K. So I have it set at 48K, and um, there we go. So now we come to the heart of routing, okay? And that's gonna be in the SQ itself. Um, this is probably the most important place that you don't wanna screw anything up, okay? So um, we're gonna be routing just two signals today. We're gonna to route uh, this microphone that I'm using um, as well as a keyboard, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is go to your local inputs, okay? So you see here I'm on local and inputs, okay? The SQ is laid out in terms of not only sockets, okay, we, when we think of old school mixers, we think of inputs, right? Because you have an input and you plug in your signal to that input, okay? Well, with digital mixers, uh, most digital mixers now, you can move inputs to different sockets, okay? So when we're talking about routing, we need to route sockets to inputs, okay? Um, so up here at the top, we have all of our physical sockets. That's where we're going to plug things in on the mixer locally. Okay, then on the side here, we have, um, you know, going down vertically, we have all the different input channels that are available. Okay, so when we um, tap something here, if I click on a square, that patches the two points. And that means we should have a signal coming in on that particular channel. So the inputs, uh, input channels here, that's what's gonna show up on the mixer. And then we're connecting the socket to that channel on the mixer, okay? I hope that makes sense. So we have socket, XLR socket 16 for our microphone, and that is coming in on channel one, input channel one of our board, okay? And um, I could put that anywhere I want, but that's what I have chosen to do. So we also have our um, Nord keyboard. We're just going to talk about this one here. That's coming in on channels 41 and 42. So that's a stereo channel that we've set up here. And the jacks on the mixer are just two quarter inch jacks on the back. So that is how we have that routed. Okay. Um, so what else do we need to do? Well, we should talk about how we're monitoring things. So let's talk about the outputs. Okay, so here is our local output and um, we have speakers in different rooms. Um, we have a broadcast mix for when we live stream on the aux channels. But um, what we're using right now in the studio um, are these two. So we have um, socket 11 and socket 12 going to the main left and right um, channels. Okay, so that is how we monitor in the studio. Also, for the purpose of this video, uh, we're using Wirecast and um, we can't use the Dante virtual sound card at the same time. So we are actually recording this via USB. And we have um, our mains going uh, to channel one and channel two of the USB card, okay? So that's how that is working. Then we also should talk more about um, the Pro Tools return signal. So that we've chosen to do here. Um, so we have channel 31, I should say socket 31, and um, 32, input socket 31, 32, is um, gonna be over here on this particular input channel, which we've labeled PTSTM, so that just means Pro Tools Stereo Mix, okay? So when I do things in Pro Tools, usually I just um, output all of the, um, the tracks to one stereo, track and um, I call it Pro Tools or in Pro Tools itself I usually just call it monitor and you'll see that later. Um, that's just a monitor track so that I can listen back to everything. Can you route each um, track to a separate channel? 
um, yeah, you could do that too. Um, I'm just a simple guy, so don't tend to do that. Okay. Anyway, um, later you will see this part referred to as monitors. I just want to make sure you understand it's just a casual reference. Really, it's a Pro Tools return uh, stereo track. All right, so then the only other thing we have to do is we have to get the signal, um, our local signal here, over to Dante. Because remember, Pro Tools is running Dante. Got to get that into Dante. So I've chosen to do that with the tie lines feature here. So tie lines, as I understand it, is um, an output to an output. Okay, so I'm taking the local outputs, local output sockets on this side. I am patching them to the Dante output sockets. So it's a direct connection. And I have chosen to use channel 26 for this microphone. And I am using 27 and 28 for the Nord keyboard. So now let's go ahead and take a look at Pro Tools and see um, what we have there. So I've already launched a, a session. We got a new session here. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you have the right playback engine selected. Okay, because um, if you have Dante, you can choose the SQ um, USB or you can choose the virtual sound card. So what is the virtual sound card anyway? Well, here it is. Um, it's just kind of a little interface and you can um, start it, stop it. Um, you can select how many channels you want and um, latency and that kind of thing. And um, that's it. It just kind of runs in the background. You have to make sure you have your license. Obviously, it was around $25, I believe. And you do need that for each um, computer that you want to license. Okay. So that's running. We've got that running here. And so we should be good now to get started with our routing in Pro Tools. So we're going to go to Setup and I.O. Okay. And this should be very similar, I would imagine, on other um, DAWs as well. There should be some kind of routing page or I.O. page, something like that. All right. Now, if you don't have anything here yet, um, well, that's great. You can do it all from scratch. Um, if you already have some things there and you, um, you know, need to start over or something just got messed up, you can always delete it. And I'll show you how to do that. Here's a quick way to add. Just click the default. And then a quick way to delete everything is just highlight, delete path. Okay, so you have nothing there. So like I said, most times all you'll need to do, if you're just doing pretty simple basic routing, just um, click the default button. Default button. And that takes care of all the routing for you. And really, you're done. Everything should work um, if you haven't done anything crazy. Okay, now if you want a little more um, customization, um, you could do manual um, routing. So for example, I could create a new path. I could create one mono input. I could put it wherever I want. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, just on the, like on the SQ, we didn't have to put channel one on socket one and so forth. We could put this over here on nine if we wanted to. Okay. Um, but we're not. We're going to keep it simple. We could also click on the format and make this a stereo track or stereo input. And um, then you have this pencil that pops up and you have your left and right. Okay. So we could do that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make 26 mono inputs. I'm going to rename this one Desk Mic. That's the one I'm chatting with you now. All right, and then we'll do, do three stereo inputs because that's how many I have. All right, so um, like I said, the only ones we're testing are the desk mic and the Nord today, just keeping it simple. But that is all routed now.
So let's go to outputs. We're going to leave all the outputs in stereo format. You could make these uh, mono if you'd like to have some returns into Pro Tools and mix that way. I usually just mix um, with the MIDI uh, as I demonstrated in a previous video for uh, MIDI DAW control. So usually I just mix down to two tracks. Um, or a stereo track, I should say. And so I'm just naming that monitors, and then I'll go ahead and set my default to monitors down here. Okay, that's pretty basic crowding. Okay, I don't need anything fancy. I'm not a fancy kind of guy. Maybe you are, and that's wonderful. So we're gonna do some tracks um, now and see if this actually worked. Hopefully everything worked since we took our time and set it all up. So let's do a mono track. And this will be for our desk mic. Let's see if the desk mic works. We'll set our outputs on the monitors. And if we do this, it should work. Great. Test one, two. Let's see if we can record. Test one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. That's working. All right, let's go ahead and test our keyboard. And new track. Do a stereo. And look, it already has it set up for us for the Nord here. And um, there's our monitors. So let's go see if um, this is going to work here. good sound there and um, yeah I forgot to press record but that's all right you get the idea um, so everything is working as you can see and we have audio fantastic that was the goal to have audio so at the end of the day you do all this work and route and you get audio fantastic all right, folks, I hope that was helpful um, with routing and Pro Tools and Dante and USB and all kind of stuff there, wasn't it? Um, hopefully you can apply this to your individual situation. What I've found is um, if you have problems with routing, try to take a step back and um, maybe take a short break for a minute, you know, and just let your mind think because with all these different options and the possibility to route things to so many places, you can get lost in it. So it's important to take it one step at a time. Think, why isn't something working? For example, I have um, regular Pro Tools. Regular Pro Tools cannot route past 32 channels, which I did not realize. And I was just saying, why did channel 33 not route correctly? That's, that's why. It's not possible. I was doing everything right. It just So little things like that can really eat up your time. Okay, so just take your time, route things accordingly, and you'll be fine. Have fun. And uh, have fun making music. If this was helpful, please do consider clicking the subscribe button if you can find it in your heart. We really appreciate that. And if you have a particular subject you'd like us to cover or consider covering, do let us know in the comments. All right. Thanks and take care. We'll see you next time.